What's going on, YouTube, and welcome back to Goal Line Hockey. It's your boy, Kevin Forte, and today we are going over the latest going on with the New Jersey Devils and the Ottawa Senators. So with where these two teams are drafting, there's some rumors out there in New Jersey and Ottawa that they could be willing to kind of get themselves out of the rebuild. They're done picking up prospects. They may be willing to trade their first-round picks pretty prized first round picks in order to acquire a quote unquote impact player. So we'll go over those rumors today, who they could be going after, what kind of position, what are the, some of the team's needs. We'll go over that right now. So let's get into it. So we're starting off with the New Jersey Devils. So Tom Fitzgerald uh, was not really holding back. So huge moves coming for the Devils. Uh, the New Jersey Devils moved up to the number two selection at the 2022 NHL Draft Lottery. And General Manager Tom Fitzgerald admitted they will consider all options, including trading the draft pick. So what you have to consider here with where the Devils are picking. So at number two is a very valuable spot. And there's a, depending on the team, there's a couple guys that could go there. Now, obviously Shane Wright's going first overall. But second overall, there's a little more debate. If the Devils keep that pick, it's kind of more certain. But if somebody else gets that pick, they're probably going for somebody other than what the Devils would go for at number two. And, he, and let me, I'll get to that in a second. So the second overall pick is rumored right now to be Yurov Shlavkovsky. Um, he's a pretty good winger. Some have even compared him to the likes of a Yarmir Yager. Obviously not Yager, but that same kind of game. So if the Devils were to acquire a, a guy that's being considered uh, a Yager-esque player, I think they would keep that guy, right? Especially, you know, considering Yager played for the Devs for a little bit. Um, so you're looking at that kind of guy there. But if somebody were to trade that second for that second pick, they're probably looking at one of two centers. And some people like that I say his name correctly. Uh, Matthew Savoie. Uh, he's been playing with the Winnipeg Ice and is a very talented center that a lot of people are very high on. So if somebody moves up, they're probably looking for that center or they may be looking for another guy. Logan Cooley has been playing in the U.S. National Development Program and is also another very talented center. So a team, if they're getting this second overall pick, they're looking at a guy that's potentially their first or second line center in the future. Definitely top six center, maybe even their first line core glue center. Um, so the Devils could probably get a lot for that. And depending on what team it is and what their situation is, there's a lot to be had there for the Devils if they make that move. So that's what you're looking at there. So if the New Jersey Devils end up moving that second overall pick in this year's draft, look for the team to target a scoring winger. Uh, two names to circle around are Alex DeBrinkett of the Chicago Blackhawks and Brock Besser of the Vancouver Canucks. So that is very interesting. And it does make sense. So the Chicago Blackhawks side of things. They have Jonathan Taze and Kirby Doc. That's their top two centers. And again, obviously to brink it, but you're trading him out. So Jonathan Taze, probably not coming back. He's not in the long-term plans of the Blackhawks, right? He's going to retire or he's just not going to re-sign with the Blackhawks. We know he's got some distrust with the organization, the direction of where they're going. They don't see Kirby Doc, I think, as their franchise guy, right? They don't see Kirby Doc as he's a pretty good player, but he's already had some injury issues, and he's not the fast, speedy guy that they want to build the culture around. Logan Cooley or Matthew Savoie are that kind of guy. So for the Blackhawks, definitely reason to believe that's there. And again, if you trade to bring it, that's the guy you're getting in return, right? You're getting that type of player. And we've heard that if Kane and Taze get traded, Debrinkit wants out as well. So that's what you're looking at there. And that's why that rumor does make sense. And again, it's creating that second, it's creating the first line center and Kirby Doc. So you've got, you've got Matthew Savoie or Logan Cooley and Kirby Doc. And that's a pretty good second, that's a pretty good top two guys there for the Blackhawks. So there is reason, reason to believe that is definitely on the table for the Blackhawks. Now, here's the thing. So you trade to Brinkett, right? And now the Devils get Alex to Brinkett, who at that point probably goes to the, the wing, unless they move Hughes to the wing. And I could see them doing that. So now you've got Hughes 
I mean, um, the Brinkett and Heashier as your top two centers, and then Hughes jumps to the wing, and I think that actually may be better for his development at this point. Um, so you could be looking at that. Um, and I think that would be a really, really interesting move for the Devils if they were to make that kind of trade. Same thing for Brock Besser. Now, Besser's situation is a little different. Besser is a winger, but he's a scoring winger. And he's up for a restricted free agent this summer. He's, he's an RFA this summer. And I don't think Vancouver has the cap space to re-sign him. So now New Jersey can kind of capitalize on that and say, listen, you get the second overall pick. You take whoever you want there, right? I mean, chances are, you know, they, they are wanting to trade JT Miller uh, a year out from free agency. That doesn't make sense for the Devils. Um, but again, that's a center they're going to lose. They might trade Bo Horvat. He's seemingly been upset with his time in Vancouver. So that's two centers that could be gone. Now, again, now you throw in a Logan Cooley with that second overall pick. And now the Canucks are starting to rebuild things, right? So both those teams absolutely make sense there. We've also heard rumors. Uh, yeah, so this is from Jeff Merrick. The Devils would consider moving their first round pick for an impact player, like I mentioned at the top of today's show. We've also heard about the Ottawa Senators, and I want to get to them in a second here, um, because a lot of the, these two teams are interconnected, and, and we'll get to that later on. But the Ottawa Senators, this is from Bruce Garriach, there is belief that the Senators could be willing to move the seventh overall pick. Now, what you have to consider with that seventh pick is it's right after, okay, so let's say, hypothetical, right? Let's say your top five is kind of set in stone right now. It's going to be Shane Wright is his own category. Montreal's taking him. Then the next three guys are kind of in their own category. It's going to be either um, Matthew Savoie, Yorov Slavkovsky, and Logan Cooley between two, three, and four. The, oh, excuse me, five and six. Okay, so now you've got those guys. You know what? Hold on. Hold on. Let me change that. So if teams are trading for the second overall pick, they want Logan Cooley. That's what I've been hearing. He's the second best center in this draft. Shane Wright, Yurov Slavkovsky, or Logan Cooley. They're in their second tier. They're in the second tier. Then the third tier is defensemen. Uh, and they're rumored to go to Seattle and Philadelphia. So if they're not gone by picks two and three, they will be gone by four and five. And they are Simon Nemesh and David Juracek. So they will go four and five. Then you've got six, Columbus's pick, which obviously if one of those defensemen is still there, they're going to get picked. And even if they are, you know, Ottawa's looking at a spot at seven that they are willing to trade. You could be looking at a Matt Savoie, or, uh, which I think Columbus will ultimately take, but a Matthew Savoie, a Brad Lambert, uh, Carter Gauthier is going to be available at that spot. So if Ottawa doesn't like any of those players, they're like, hey, you know what? Let's see if we could get a guy for that. And if you're looking at the Ottawa Senators, and interestingly enough, this name has come up. The Ottawa Senators have long had trade interest in Minnesota Wild forward Kevin Fiala. Isn't that interesting? So that is something that... The Ottawa Senators need. You look at their, you look at their uh, top six in particular. Yeah, they've got some good defenseman prospects. But if they added a guy like Kevin Fiala to this forward group, I think they'd be doing pretty well. You look at their group. You got Brady Kachuk and Drake Batherson on the wing for now, um, and then Formenton and Gaudet on your second line wingers. So if you move Formenton or Gaudet, you move them down to the bottom six. Now Kevin Fiala comes in. And now you've got some real depth there behind Norris and Stuchla down the middle. So I think that definitely makes sense. And the thing is, there's been rumors that uh, that Minnesota would trade for the second overall pick from the Wild, from the Devils. I don't see the Devils trading that pick, in my opinion. Um, I just don't see it. You move up in the draft. That doesn't happen very often. You might want to trade. You might want to keep that pick if I'm the Devils, um, because who knows in the next ten years. You may be saying, ah, oh, maybe we should have kept that pick, right? And the more you start to do that, I think you're you're kind of you're shooting yourself in the foot when it's a top three lottery pick. So that's that situation. For Ottawa, though, at seven, it is more realistic. I think that's something that does make sense here. Um, and I think again, we've also, like I said, <coughs> excuse me. 
The New Jersey Devils have expressed interest in wild forward Kevin Fiala, and that's also from Jeff Merrick. So both those teams are looking at Kevin Fiala as an option. And same thing for the Devils. They need help on the wing, which is why they would select Yurov Slavkovsky, right? So here's my predictions between the Minnesota Wild, the Ottawa Senators, and the New Jersey Devils. So one of those teams, New Jersey or Ottawa, will get Kevin Fiala. I think Minnesota could get it with their 7th overall pick. I think New Jersey might get it with a player trade. I think they could get it with an actual trade. Do they trade a def- I know, I know. I don't like this either. But do they trade Ty Smith or Damon Severson? I think that's what you're going to have to do. Um, I don't think they should trade Damon Severson. If you, I mean, if you could trade Ty Smith for Kevin Fiala, I would do that. And let me know what my Devils fans think down below. Because I think that Ty Smith had a down year. Again, he could bounce back. I know the Devils fans really like Ty Smith, but I would not trade Damon Severson. Like, I'd rather trade Smith than Severson. That's just my take. And then you get Kevin Fiala, right? Or Fiala goes to the Ottawa Senators. And I think that he could go to the Senators and be a nice player there. And it does make sense. And they trade the seventh pick to get Fiala. Great. Then comes Matt Dumba. Matt Dumba, for some reason, I just... It's in my brain. It's like hardwired in me. I have like that that sense, that that sixth sense that Matt Dumba will be a New Jersey Devil in training camp next year. And I think Matt Dumba does fit there. You know, especially you look behind Severson, there really is a little bit of a of a hole on their blue line, right? You've got Severson and Hamilton and then Subban, who's not coming back. Then you've got Graves and... And then Kevin Ball and Nikita Okatiak, or Ty Smith. I definitely butchered his name. Um, but Kevin Ball in that second spot doesn't really work. If they were to put Matt Dumba in there, you know, I would say that's a pretty seismic upgrade. But again, what do they trade? I don't see them trading Ty Smith for Matt Dumba because it doesn't make sense from the wild side of things. Now, it actually does in a sense because they're saving the cap space, right? You've got Ty Smith on an ELC, eventually a bridge deal. That does make sense. The only problem is, like I'm looking at right now, Matt Dumba does play on the right side. So if you could get somebody to play on the left side, that's a pretty good top four. You know, again, this is all hypothetical, but this is just, this is kind of, we have to play this game until we see actual trades happen, right? Um, So Matt Dumba, he's a right chat defenseman. Okay. So that means somebody's going to have to move there. So you've got Graves, Severson, Hamilton, and Matt Dumba. I would say that's a pretty solid top four defense for the Devils next year. So that's my opinion. That's what I think the Devils should do. Now, what will they do... um, I think it's kind of similar to that, honestly. It might not be Fiala and Dumba in that order going here or there, but I think it's going to be that kind of move for both the Devils and Senators. They want to get out of the rebuild. And I think they want to establish to teams going into free agency, which is another factor here. I think they want to establish, listen, we traded our top 10 pick. We are we see ourselves as a team that can make the playoffs next year. And I think the Devils situation... There is reason to believe that there is a window there. You know, Pittsburgh's window seems to be closing this potentially this summer. Washington's window seems to potentially be closing this year. That leaves room for the Devils to maybe get in there, right? So I think there is reason to believe that the Devils and Senators will be looking to go and be a little bit more proactive this year, trying to get the team better for next season. And I think that they could be doing that either at the draft floor or or, of course, free agency. They could be looking to take advantage of teams and their lack of cap space, right? They have a lot of cap space, both teams. Um, you look at the amount of cap space they have. Um, Ottawa has $10 million in cap space right now, and New Jersey has $7 million. But going into the summer, let's see if I could see what they have for this summer. Um so New Jersey is going to have $25 million in cap space this summer, which is obviously nothing to, to scoff about. And then Ottawa has $23 million. So you're looking at 
23 million and 25 million dollars for both of those teams to to potentially capitalize on and i know the devils have tried the free agency route maybe it's better that they pick up guys in a trade whether that's dumba or fiala um i mean that could be a massive trade all in itself dumba and fiala for the second pick i don't see that happening that's not very realistic but crazier things have happened right and we don't really know tom fitzgerald hasn't made a ton of big moves yet in new jersey he's kind of kept things where they are and just traded and drafted where he where he is so i think this is going to be an interesting summer for both teams but let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below what do you think we could see for both of these teams we could see them both looking for goalies this summer whether that's a trade or free agency i think there's going to be a lot of movement but let me know what you guys think guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you again next time